Well, I mean, I'll tell you, Paul just kind of unloaded, right? I mean, get out the shovel and unload the whole wheelbarrow, right? Right there. And Paul is laying it on the line here. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm Dr. Self-Righteous, okay? This isn't about my righteousness in any respect because, trust me, I have been malignant. I have been full of envy. I have been deceitful. I've done these things, been a whisper, backbiter, you know, all of these things. You didn't think I haven't been down this path? Sure I have. And I can't, I'm not claiming to ever be sinless. He who claims he was without sin is a liar. I'm not claiming to be sinless, not in any respect. And I'm not here to condemn human beings uh, who do this. But you have to keep in mind, and this is the point of this discussion, when you sit and deny Yahweh, now I want him out of here. I don't want him in my mind. I don't want his morality in my heart. And I don't want him in my mind. I want that gone. Then you're given over to a reprobate mind. You're given over to a darkness. You see, the darkness begins to encroach. And then you move on to do abominable things, right? And your abominations become wickedness. They become iniquity. They become maliciousness. They become, you know, look, you know that covetousness, which is basically lust, is preached from the pulpit of American churches, right? Your house isn't big enough. Our church isn't big enough. We need a gymnasium. We need bigger screens. We need more congregation. I need a newer and faster jet. Uh, you know, I, all of these things, right? It's just like you can have more in this life. Pray for more. Pray for goodies. Pray for material stuff. Pray for this and just keep pushing, pushing, because you should be envious of those who have it, and you should covet those things. Well, that's not supposed to be taught from the pulpit. That's not supposed to be taught from the pulpit, right? Inventors of evil things, you know, people who sit and scheme. Well, look, here's how I can get over. I'll just rip this guy off like this. I'll never get caught, but I can just rip this guy off. I don't have to listen to this law. I can just break it, right? Well, these people are without understanding. Now, when you're talking about being without understanding and being a covenant breaker, look, you have jeopardized your life. Because when you do not have a proper understanding of that which exists, you are at risk in this life. Risk to be suddenly killed, risk to be suddenly victimized, because you can't identify that which is. But I grew up in Alaska, and that place can kill you any day of the week in, in any myriad number of ways, right? You can die from the cold. You can die from a wild animal. And, and that's just talking about the people that live there. We're not talking about the actual beasts of the field. But, I mean, you know, look, there's where I grew, you know, in the city of Anchorage, there are people with, that are killed by bears inside the city limits about every other year. People stomped by moose. People attacked by wolves. Right. And you also have the cold weather. There were volcanoes. There were major earthquakes. I mean, I was up there for the 9.3 that happened in 1964. Vicious earthquake. You know, I mean, destroyed the place. I remember Al Bramstead coming on the air saying Anchorage has been destroyed. You know, and it was. I mean, it was wiped out, you know. But what you see is, is that in that kind of environment, you learn very quickly that you have to be able to identify that which is, and you need to identify it correctly, or you may be dead. But you can see here, so I mean, Paul is, is kind of landing on the line, and he's, you know, I think uh, some of the big things about this is that, you know, hating your parents, being unmerciful, breaking covenant, breaking covenant, you know, these kinds of things, you know, uh, they have this old saying, you know, what goes around comes around, right? If you're a continuing covenant breaker, you can count on covenants that you're counting on being broken by other people who have no respect for you because you're a covenant breaker, right? All right. Now, in 2 Thessalonians, Paul is going to say something more. He's going to tell us here, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Now, again, we've talked about the mystery of the kingdom, right? That to the Talmudim, to those who have the testimony of Mashiach and to those who guard the commandments, it is given to understand the mystery of the kingdom. But to those who do not have this, it has not been given. They have ears that hear but do not understand, eyes that see that do not perceive. And, you know, we know this is the truth. I've had people who said, you know, non-believers who said, look, I read the Bible cover to cover, didn't understand a word of it. Out, right? Because it just did not cognize, it was not being cognized at all. 
Well, here, Paul says, the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he's been taken out of the way. Now, what this means is, is that the tares, right, that are growing in with the wheat, he who lets is going to continue to let those tares grow. In other words, there's not going to be an intervention. You can't sit here and say, look, I'm going to be rebellious to my maker and expect that there is going to be someone who comes along and calls you to account eventually before you die. It may not happen. You may be one of those that's described in the 70 verses of 4 Ezra that dies and is reduced to wandering the face of the earth until judgment day in a spirit form that just continually loses consciousness until you don't know where you are at all as compared to resting in peace, right? Then he says, and then shall that Torahless one be revealed, whom Adonai Yahusha shall consume with the ruach of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. At even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That is the lawless one, the Torahless one. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness of them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, in my opinion, that delusion is among us now. The lie is being told, and that which is good is being declared, declared evil, and that which is evil is being declared good. There are people who say, oh, this is the true record, this is the true oral law, this is the true word of God, and it's not, it's not, and it's not. And if the people who say this is the moral code for the whole earth, then it's not the moral code for the whole earth. There is a moral code that was given to us by the voice of Yah himself out of the cloud, out of the fire, out of the midst, at the base of Mount Horeb. This is the true oral law. And this other stuff is a lie. And this lie is being given. And those who do not seek the truth, those who are not in love with the truth, you know, people ask me, what's my first step, Steve? I don't know what to do. I'm lost. I've been a sinner my whole life. And I don't know how I'm going to ever work my way back into the kingdom. If I ever set foot in the church, a bolt of lightning will hit me and blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, that's not true. But the most important thing is you have to ask yourself, was there ever a time in your life when you said to yourself, I am, you know, to myself, I'm going to tell the truth. To myself, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to be honest to the truth. I'm going to seek the truth, right? If you've got that in your heart and you tell yourself, I want to find the truth and I'm going to dig through it no matter what, no matter what I come upon, I'm going to dig through it until I come up with the truth, you'll find him because he is the truth and you will find him. All right. Let's take a look here at um, 17. Again, we're going to continue with this parable of the tares, right? The kingdom of Yahweh is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his own way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the house of Yahweh came and said unto him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? From whence then has it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will you then that we go and gather them up? But he said to them, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. All oh, important point. Next slide. The enemy has sowed tares among the wheat. But we are not to gather up the tares, but to let them fully ripen. Gathering the tares prematurely will harm the wheat, so let them be. At the time of the harvest, the tares will be gathered together into bundles, that is to say into groups, and will be burned. Then we gather the wheat. 
such an important concept that's being taught here that when people you know have committed themselves to mocking Yah and to denigrating believers and to scoffing and to doing things like creating paintings of, of you know, of the Mashiach in, in, in bottles of urine and, uh, you know, and uh, doing things like this. And we're talking about mockers and scoffers and scorners and malicious people and backbiters and haters, all this stuff. You're not going to be able to say, you know, look, have you thought about the mercy of your creator who loves you? You're not going to be able to say it to them. And quite frankly, you trying to root them up and say, you know, look, you guys have no part in our society is pure foolishness. Now, in my opinion, our social order is about 92 to 93 percent tares. There's just a little bit of wild wheat left growing. But most of the social order is tares. And as a consequence, you can sit here and say, well, I'm going to convert these tares into wheat. It's never going to happen. You're not going to convert the tares into wheat. Allow the tares to grow and leave them be. But how can we know? How can we know? Well, look at 19 here. For I know at the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will hear your prayers. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you. Such an important set of words, says Yahweh. And I will turn away at your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says Yahweh. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And so you see that this idea of seeking the truth and seeking Yah with all of your heart and your mind and your soul. And what does it say? If you seek him this way, you will find him. He will be found by you. He will be found by you. And guess what? He knows your name. He's known it from the very beginning. He held you in his hand before time began.